my name is Sam, and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification, and if you get to the end and enjoyed it, then give the video a thumbs up. This is going up on New Year's Day, so if you're a dog owner, or a not dog owner, and wish you were a dog owner, here's a good start to your New Year. Here's cute, ugly puppy. <laughs> Just look. Look that one. Cute, ugly puppy. So this month, I took into consideration my 2019 goals. I also have plans to buddy read a book with a friend because it's one of her favorite books and she wants to reread it because the sequel came out and I had never heard of it until very recently. And then I've also got my 2019 goals, obviously including the picking a book from a jar. Oh, and then on top of that, at the end of January, the last week or so, I'm kind of out of commission, so there may not be any videos. Uh, I have to travel to a different province for work and I'm taking like a mini a vacation trip visiting people at the same time. So I'm going to be busy. The other things that I'm also taking into consideration is the TBR and Beyond yearly challenge. Um, there's, I think, 26 prompts on it in total, and I want to try and get as many as I can done. And then I'm also thinking about doing the Modern Mrs. Darcy one as well, which isn't super big, and I think there's going to be a lot of crossover between my personal interests just reading, my own goals, the TBR goals, and then the Modern Mrs. Darcy. So I think I can actually do them all. And without further ado, these are the books that I plan on attempting to read in the month of January. Also, side note, I'm like super excited that it's January because now I get to use my new like little inkling agenda thingy. So the first book that I'm planning to read, and it is the one I'm going to buddy read with my friend Melanie, is East by Edith Patu. I feel like I've almost been a bad human for having never heard of this book until the last like six months. Like it won a bunch of awards, the ALA Top Best Book for Young Adults, the ALA Notable Children's Book, School Library Journal, Best Book of the Year. Book Set 76, a Junior Library Guild Selection, a New York Public Library Book for the Teen Age, Ohioan Book Award winner, and it's been like 15 years, I guess, since or 10 or something like that years since it came out, and then the sequel, West, finally just came out, which I'm kind of happy I didn't find out about it, because I feel like it would actually pull someone's hair out <laughs> if I had to wait 10 years between books. I'm... I legitimately only know it's supposed to be like set in kind of like a northerny area. My friend said she thinks it's like Scandinavian -y folklore. That's literally all I know. I'm okay going into it with that. I knew I was going to have to read it because she loved it. And she and I tend to have pretty similar tastes for the most part. And I'm just really curious to see what all the hype was about. And if I like it, then I can pick up the sequel, Wes. I'm also planning on getting to Beneath the Citadel by Destiny Soria. I'm very excited about this. The author is going to be in the TBR and Beyond group, and it was a book that the TBR and Beyond group picked. I'm just, all I know is there's supposed to be a lot of good LGBTQ rep, as well as a lot of different representations in here. And there was like a fair bit amount of hype, I think, like right when it came out. And then I, it kind of died off, and I've heard everyone be like, I own it and haven't gotten to it yet. So I feel like that's <laughs> going to be a trend. So if you are one of those people, join the group and we'll all like kind of support each other group reading. I just know there's supposed to be a little bit of like necromancy and paranormal supernatural, which I've been very into over the last couple of months, surprisingly. It's kind of snuck into a lot of books that I've randomly picked up and I've been really enjoying it because a lot of the times I find supernaturals like just cheesy cop out or really bad and cringy. I'm going to be doing a reread of even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. The sequel, All the Wandering Lights, came out, and I did pick it up. I'm so happy. But I want to refresh my memory. I remember, I think, the most part of it, but I remember the ending, like, shook me. So I really want to read this and make sure it's all fresh in my mind. And then in February, I'll pick up All the Wandering Lights. I really vividly remember this, that Kem's in as the main character. She's a hot mess of a human, and I love her. And, like, she, it literally starts off with her, like, getting absolutely blackout, like, belligerently drunk at some function. And she's, like, the king's second daughter or something like that. And then she has to take a tour, like, lead these people through this area that is, like, you cannot pass through it in order to, like, find her sister who's gone missing and, like, it's just real good. And there's, like, oh, my God, betrayal. And there's this cool, like, fox thing which is like it's right on the cover and I'm very excited and also Heather Fawcett is a Canadian author which does tick off one of the boxes I think one of the TBR challenges I think is read an author that is not from the United States so ta-da <laughs> I'm also going to do a reread of Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie for two no three reasons one it is a book for the TBR and Beyond group 
two, Amanda Foodie is coming to the TBR and Beyond book group, and I'm very excited to chat with her. And three, King of Fools comes out in the next couple months. So I want to refresh my memory. And also kind of a fourth one. It's almost like nostalgia. I got the arc of this last January at the conference that I'm going to again this year in January. So I was like, oh, this will be kind of a fun thing to be like full circle. I don't know. It literally means nothing to anyone but me. But very excited. I absolutely love this book the first time it came out. It was one of my favorite books, I think, of the year. It's like Six of Crows meets like Ocean's Eleven and like it's just so good and the ending is so good. Oh my god, it's so good. So refreshing my memory and getting ready for King of Fools. I think this is one I'm probably going to take with me on my travels and like put it in a book sleeve and pull it out on the train. The Crowns of Croswell by D.E. Knight. The author slash publisher or her agent was really nice enough in the TBR and Beyond group to say who wants um, who would like a free copy, we would just make sure you review it. And then I got like a little extra stuff because I'm a librarian, including this little like cute potion ball thing in here, which is a light when you see. Um, it sounds a little bit like Shadow Hunters combined with Harry Potter almost with like, a, I keep thinking like reading the summary and think Queens of Renthia, which Queens of Renthia is more of like an adult, new adult book, and it's like kind of very dark, like super dark. But this sounds like more like a YA middle grade so sort of that spectrum, and I'm very curious about it. I'll keep you all updated. Like the author was really nice. I think there's a sequel supposed to come out soon, and I like this cover work actually, like the fairies and like, I don't know, it's just I vibe with this cover for some reason. And I'm just really, really, really excited. And I hope I like it. I'm getting back on my Outlander because I like kind of fell off the bandwagon, especially the last couple months. I am going to try not try. I've, I've used try and I've let my like it's a cop out for me. I am going to finish a breath start and finish a breath of snow and ashes this month. I want to make sure I start it before I go back to work on January 7th. I'm also going to do a reread of the Jacoby series. A because I love this series so much and it doesn't get enough hype. And two, William Ritter has a middle grade book coming out in 2019, I think. And I'm very curious to see where that goes. And I'm just prepping myself for it. I really do enjoy his writing. I love these characters. I love, there's specifically a quote in this, in Jacoby specifically, that like, I read this book over a year and a half ago, I think now. And like, it still sits with me. But it's like, this girl is like, I've been waiting my whole life to be taken on an adventure. I'm not letting you leave on my doorstep with it and just leave me here. Like, it's just it was just such a good historical fiction, such a good mystery, and such a good paranormal, and, like, I don't know. I just love this series, so I'm rereading it. I'm also doing a reread of The Girl from Everywhere by, from Heidi Healy. This duology I plan on rereading this year, so I'll be done it February. I'm going to read The Ship Beyond Time, the sequel, and if I can... No, that's not true. I may... Last time I read them, like, almost back to back, I think, because they were so good. So maybe I'll read them both this month, but my plan is to just read <laughs> The Girl From Everywhere this month. It is time traveling pirates with a girl who's got daddy issues with her daddy there, and his dad misses her mother, and he's trying to get the mom back, but if he gets the mom back, the daughter disappears. So that's like a describe this book badly sort of summary, but it's accurate. So I debated most of December picking this book up, and then I just kept putting it off for other books because I was like, this is a new book. These other books, you know, I have to, I, they've been out for a little while longer. I just really, really want to read them. So I'm definitely going to get to Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. This is the sequel to Renegades. I reread Renegades in November, I think. So it's all really fresh in my mind. And I'm hearing really, really good things from the people who have read this. And I'm very excited. I originally thought this was supposed to be a duology. And then I noticed on Goodreads, there's a Renegades 3 Untitled right now. And I was like, all right, cool. That sounds awesome. This month I also plan on getting to Dry by Niall Schusterman and Jared Schusterman. I am waiting so impatiently for the toll. There's no date. There's no cover. I just need it so bad. But one of my goals is to try and catch up on, whilst I'm waiting for the toll, to catch up on my Niall Schusterman. I have this whole wine quartet and I have Dry and I've heard nothing but absolutely amazing things about Dry. Plus it's a standalone so I'm not starting off a new series this month right away. All I know is supposed to be like during a drought in I think California during the wildfires. Or maybe I'm just thinking drought in wildfires and then I insert California because California is like always on fire. But Drought and water access, which I think is kind of like relevant to our society as well. And Schusterman has this ability to hurt my soul. So, gonna give it a go. 
I'm also picking up Ruby Red by Kirsten, right? Kirsten Gear. I, I think this book was originally written in German. I'm like almost 100% sure. Now, I high key hate these covers of this series. I only bought it because it was the box set and it was super cheap off of Book Outlet. However, a cover aside, <laughs> I'm picking it up in, because, despite the cover, which actually that's another, I think, prompt for the TBR yearly reading challenge. So I might have that done. But just like listen to like the first paragraph. 17 year old Gwen lives with her extended and rather eccentric family in an exclusive London neighborhood. In spite of her ancestral peculiar history, she's had a relatively normal life so far. The time, tra the time traveling gene that runs in secret threads throughout the female half of her family is supposed to have skipped her. And she's introduced. So she hasn't been introduced to these mysteries. You can spend her time hanging out with her best friend, Leslie. It comes as an unwelcome surprise when she starts taking a sudden uncontrolled leaps into the past. She's totally unprepared for time travel, not to mention all that comes with it. Fancy clothes, archaic manners, and mysterious secret society, and Gideon, her time traveling counterpart. And that's literally like the, the, like, I'm trash for all of these tropes. That's like literally a list in there. So... Despite having horrible covers and the most generic white people names of all time of Gwen and Leslie, I'm going to give it a go. I want to get this trilogy done this year, or at least attempt it. And if I don't like it, then I'll just unhaul it. And geez, these covers are so bad. Oh, before I forget, there are 14 in here. It may not look like it because this mason jar is ginormous. My 2019 thing was to pick two from the jar each month and then read at least one of them. Okay. So there's number one. So that way it gives me some picking options. Okay. So I've got either, oops, The Stars Never Rise by Rachel Vincent or Timeless by Armand Balsazar. So that one up there is Timeless. I've had a couple people comment on my videos being like, what? that book I randomly just picked it up at Chopper's Drug Mart for like ten dollars it's like 600 pages and there's like full images it's a heavy book hmm Timelines by Armand Balthazar and The Stars Never Rise by Rachel Vincent now this may change but simply because i Purchased Timeless pretty recently, and it looks like a fun book that I'll eventually read. I'm, I have no intention of unhauling it. Whereas The Stars Never Rise, I almost unhauled it a couple times just because I don't super love the cover. It's not terrible, but and I just don't really hear anything about it. But I think there's a sequel out, and I think I've seen it on Book Outlet a couple times, and I almost bought it. And then I was like, wait, you almost unhauled the first book. Why would you? So I think I'm at this, my current mentality while I'm filming is I'll do The Stars Never Rise, but I may change my mind. But we'll just put the stars never rise. Okay, I gotta put these in a safe space so that if I don't read Timeless later this month or if I don't get to the stars never rise, they go back in the jar. One of my 2019 goals is to reread the first three books of the Wind Witch series, not Wind Witch, the Witchland series. So I'm gonna read Truth Witch and then Wind Witch probably next month and then I'll probably Sight Witch after and decide if I want to get Blood Witch. I don't really love the covers of this series as a whole. However, the, the third book, Blood Witch, I was really excited for it, but I really don't like the cover. So I was kind of like, is this series worth me to continue buying? Or maybe I should just stop buying and use the library instead or, you know, whatever. But I like enjoyed the content for the most part, I think. So I'm going to give it a reread and see where I stand. So I'm continuing to work my way through the Sherlock Holmes anthology that I have. So we are going this month to focus on the return of Sherlock Holmes. I'm also going to read Water's Wrath by Elise Kova. This is book four in the Air Awakened series. I was trying to catch up on it before the Vortex uh, book came out. I think it's called Vortex Vision, which is like the spin-off new series. It comes out, starts in February. But like, I just heard that it was coming out and then I was like, okay, I'll catch up. And then like, I kind of like just not lost steam, but got distracted by other books. And then she finally announced the release date. And I was like, crap, I forgot about that. So <laughs> getting back on the train. So I'm going to do Water's Wrath this month by Elise Kova and hopefully Crystal Crown or Crystal, no, Crystal Crowned, which is book five and the last in the, in the series. And then hopefully I'm going to pick up the Vortex Vision because I love the covers of this series. Like, yes, there are people on them, but they're like designed, like they're graphic-y designed, like painting stuff, right? Not 
not ruby red. So I'm very excited. And I am a little bit hesitant because everyone I know that's read this series has said it declines after book three, like book four and five are like you peak and then there's the, the slowest decline. So I'm hoping I love it. I also am going to pick up A Winter's Promise this month by, oh, Christa, Christelle Debos. So this book was actually originally released in French. So that is one of the cues um, in the TBR and Beyond challenges to read a book originally not written in English. So if you are doing that challenge, by the way, you could always do, um, was it Maurice Drouin, that whole series that inspired Game of Thrones that was all originally written in French too. I'm very curious about this. I'm trash for this cover. I'm always interested in books that are originally written in different languages, but I don't find a ton of them for the most part anyways. And I've just heard like either like high praise or absolute destruction of the books. Um, I just know this supposed to be like kind of a mix up and there's a, a character named Ophelia, which at first I was like, oh, okay, you piqued my interest there. That's a, that's interesting as a Shakespeare person. I like that. I just know that someone is essentially, she's being married off for the most part. And I think it's this world where like the gods are everywhere. I'll just read it because I feel like this is like a book that's pretty unknown. It has a pretty cover and it's kind of being translated over into English. So it could be big. Yeah. Okay. A mix of awkward misfit and misunderstood genius. Ophelia cares little about her appearances, about appearances and other people's opinions of her. She's possessed two special gifts and unrivaled talent for reading the past of objects and the ability to travel through mirrors. We've established how much I love mirror travel. Her peaceful, if somewhat dull experience on the Ark of Anima is interrupted when she's promised in marriage by Thorn. Uh, in marriage to Thorn. Oh, I wish it was, I thought it was Thor the first time. <laughs> Attack turn and influential member of the powerful clan from a distant arc, the cold and icy pole. Ophelia must follow her fiance to the towering city of Sita Celesti, where nobody can be trusted. There in the company of her inscrutable future husband, Ophelia slowly realizes that she is a pawn in a political game that will have far-reaching ramifications not only for her, but for the entire world. Maybe that's why I thought it was gods, because it said Thor. I thought it said Thor. It's Thorn. Which, oh, Mercy my, oh, Lunar Chronicles. Okay, I'm okay with both of those. <laughs> Either way, very, very curious. I heard, like, literally, I think I read the first, like, only line in the in the store, and I was like, mirror travel? Where have I heard that before? Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors. And I got so excited, so that was honest to God one of the reasons I picked it up. So I'm really, really hoping I like it. I'm trash for this cover. It's so freaking pretty. And I think it's supposed to be four books in total, so I'm hoping they translate all four of them over. And lastly this month, I'm hoping to get to I Will Be There in the Dark by Sh Michelle McNamara. So she was the wife of Patton Oswald. She was an author, obviously, but she specifically put like a ton of time into this. It's a nonfiction book about the Golden State Killer, which has now been caught. That's why there's been all of a sudden this spike in people reading it all of a sudden. So they caught the person that they think who did it. And the trial and all that stuff is going to be starting and I know it's just going to be a lot of like headlines and I all of it I think happened like before I was born or like when I was a child so I really had no idea what the heck I'm also not someone who watches a ton of like murder mystery stuff so I had no idea what the heck people were talking about and they're like the golden state killer was caught so she did all this like compilation and researching and like putting everything together um before she passed away so I've heard nothing but really good things about it and I'm very excited to read it. I'm just, I'm very, very curious to get on this nonfiction thing. I, one of my 2019 things is to read at least one nonfiction book a month. And I've got a couple set up for the first few months. And I feel like I've got a good sense now of like the nonfictions I kind of like. And this is probably going to be one of them. So I'm very excited. So those are my January TBR plans. Let me know in the comment section down below what you plan on reading this month, or if you've read any of these and you had any thoughts, I would love to know. Make sure to check the description box down below. I will link all of these books to their Goodreads pages, and I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.